So our program for today is being given by Annabelle Ebersall, who is both a CPQG member and she's also local so-called POD, P-O-D, leader for the local SACWA group, and she may explain more about that later. Um, so Annabelle's uh, biography in terms of uh, quilting is that she first started quilting at the Smithsonian Institution in D.C., and then she was posted to Brazil in 1984. A love of quilting... Uh, um, took off. And then when she was in Reston, which again is Virginia, she joined the Reston Quilters Unlimited. And when she was in London, as in England, not as in uh, Ontario, um, she uh, worked for, um, she worked in London and then also worked at the Quilt Patch in Fairfax, Virginia. So teaching classes and selling things. Um, and she taught there for four years and then also worked at Artful Quilter in Centerville, Virginia for another four years. So she's worked in a lot of quilt shops, has a lot of knowledge of quilting tools, and art quilting is her real passion. And she's taken uh, classes at a number of places, Quilt Surface Design Symposium, Art Quilt Network. And she also is a member, in addition to SACWA, of Fiber Artists at Loose Ends, which is a, a NOVA, a Northern Virginia group. She's exhibited her art quilts at a number of national cancer centers and has exhibited in with loose threads in McLean and with Sacred Threads threads and also um, has had an exhibit quite recently with loose threads at the Virginia Quilt Museum. So with no, no further ado, I'm spotlighting you, Annabelle. You want to say a few words and then we will run your PowerPoint? Well, hello, everyone. I really, really enjoyed the show and tell today. It is just marvelous to see the wide breadth of quilting and quilts that we all make and the generous hearts among everyone in this guild. It's very exciting. And I'm happy to be able to uh, share some of my quilts. It's a real honor. It's quilting has just made a huge difference in my life and I love to share and teach and make quilts. Okay, so, so, so thank you for that. So what I'm going to do, folks, is I will be sharing my screen just as I did with an ordinary PowerPoint. You will be able to see Annabelle's face if you go up to the top of your screen and do side-by-side -side mode. Otherwise, just enjoy her art quilts, which are going to be shared using her PowerPoint in about three seconds here. There you go. And I want to point out that for once, I did not make the PowerPoint. Oh, thank you so much. This Clara Coleman is Annabelle's daughter. So take it away, Annabelle. Yes. So Clara is my older daughter. And um, she said, oh, mom, I know how to do that. I've made tons of decks. So she helped me about two weeks ago. And it was great to have that done. Um, this first quilt is uh, one that I made in 2007. And I'd like to highlight, um, Kathleen, some of the words, please. It is, um, it has words on it like love and balance and tension. And the reason why uh, this was in the very beginning of me writing words on quilts. And the flowers that you see coming up have come from the messy roots that are down below. I had fun making all those messy roots. In uh, 1999, we returned from London. And while we were in London, I had been to these incredible quilt shows there and um, fiber shows and came home with things that I bought because they really caught my eye and I had no idea I really would want them and need them. And then I've grown into art quilting and I have what I need. So that's an early early quilt, push stress. Now the English country cottages on the top um, are fun. They are um, showing my love of the English countryside. But the fun detail is I made a stamp for each of these little houses out of a styrofoam meat tray. You clean it well and then you can incise it with a skewer and you can use it to print on fabric with your fabric paint. And it took a little practice not to get it too dark, too light, whatever. And then I went back afterwards and I put more quilting 
the little cream colored house has thatch effect on the on the roof or maybe it's the green one that that has more thatch looks like a thatched roof and then over, over on the bottom left i put in a little secret garden doorway because i love the francis hodgson burnett story about the secret garden so this this was fun to make and Underneath is a um, quilt of a lady slipper orchid. And my parents had a summer house up in Rose Bay, Nova Scotia. And we went to visit in the summers. Um, it was the best vacation place. It was just really laid back and very, very rugged. But driving down the long driveway to get there, there would be these huge hackmatack pine trees in the background. And if we were really lucky, we would see a lady slipper orchid. And I made this for my mom and she hung it on her wall forever and ever. Um, and then when my family gave me a surprise uh, 60th birthday party up in New Hampshire, lo and behold, there were lady slipper orchids in bloom in the little town in New Hampshire where we all gathered. That was pretty cool. Oh. That is neat. Now, this one is called Disappearing Stars, and it's a, it's a pattern from a book from someone from In the Beginning, Quilt Shop, I believe. And I was really experimenting with values of fabric. So I meant for that pink block right there to, to disappear. And um, it, was, it was fun. There is a star in there. <laughs> it was fun to work on it. Um, this was quilted by Kathy Gray at the Quilt Patch. So I made that in the early uh, 2000s and has been a treasured bed quilt. What you know, size is it, Annabelle? How, how big uh, is it? Queen size. Queen, queen. And, and actually the, the dark green stripe is very handy because you center that on your queen size you know, bed and, and then the drape works perfectly. Cool. Okay. So, so back in July of 1969, I was a summer language student in Brittany in France in a little town. There were two Americans who were hanging out among the group of teens and we stayed up because the moonwalk was going to be at 4 a.m. We stayed up and we played poker with matchsticks. So I made this funky quilt with the, the cards and the matchsticks and the people, the television with the picture of the moonwalk. I made a mirror over on the left by the TV and the curtain fabric in the window is um, probably something from fiber on a whim that's hand dyed cheesecloth or, or voile or something like that. Now going down as one of two Americans, we personally were thanked as if we, we were thanked as if we personally had helped NASA. It was <laughs> just the most amazing thing. It was, it was a great commemoration. Now, um, this was part of a challenge from Susan Miller, Suzanne Miller Jones, and she had a book and a whole group of quilts that traveled that were part of commemorating the first walk on the moon. Mine did not get in, and the reason why was um, if you look at the lower lettering. Oh, we're not going to look at that, Annabelle. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful quilt. All right, I'm not going to let you explain that again. It didn't get in because judges often make arbitrary decisions. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, this was while we were in London, and it's um, the pattern came from. Uh, Mary Lou Weidman's book and I it's angels in our lives so it has angels and then it has animals and this was one of the first times that I wrote on a quilt and it, it was just such fun to make and the cute little story about this is we lived in London and I really wanted a particular fabric that was shown in her book which I purchased and I called Seattle Washington I called the in the beginning quilt shop and they sent me the fabric. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I was so excited. So um, that was an early, early piece. 
lovely. Now, my, my dad um, had Alzheimer's and this bookshelf quilt has lots of memories for him and things that he could look at and touch. And he loved to fish. It has, um, he, they had a vineyard on the Eastern shore of Maryland and he and I were cheese partners. He loved cheese and I'm his only daughter. So we were cheese partners that they um, grew carrots for canneries and there was a huge, huge carrot that um, dad came, came, Bruce and I were there with them for the weekend. Dad came in and said, I put a carrot on the hood of your car for you to take off. <laughs> it was ginormous. It was just ginormous and it was tender all the way through. It was a special carrot that <laughs> used for canning in soup and, and in cans. He loves cigars, so there's a cigar down there. And then on the back, I put um, photographs of the family and things, things that he loved. So if someone was visiting him, you know, they could turn it over and ask him to talk about the different things and what was happening. So this, this was a very good memento. Wow. Wow, that's really special, Annabelle. Very thoughtful of you. Well. It helped me enormously because we were in London when this was happening. So it helped me to make that. So yeah. yeah, big adjustment. And I, I thought the pictures were beautiful, but I didn't know the backstory. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, that's a pun backstory. Okay. Your <laughs> London garden. <laughs> so my London garden, we, oh, we sorry. actually, we actually did get to, um, anyway, when we moved into the townhouse that the embassy owned, there was no garden. So we got to plant a garden and um, that was loads of fun. I took a class before I left England from an American woman at a really cool quilt retreat. And she was teaching the techniques. Um, and one of the things that she did, and I did in this, in this particular quilt, you put in spacers like this pink and white striped spacer there. You know, if your blocks don't meet perfectly, you'll see me doing that again later in other quilts. And when you're teaching or making something out of disparate sizes of blocks, it just equalizes everything. Mm -hmm. It adds to the richness of the quilt. I also have interior flanges around the orange star and around the whole inner part of the quilt. There's a black and white uh, on one side and then the raspberry and white on the other. Cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll pause for a second. So, oops, oh shoot, wrong button. Okay, so you can all see the, the whole effect here. So here's the outer flange and then there's the inner flange. Cool. Okay. Um, this quilt was uh, made for a challenge that Donna DeSoto had for the Beatles songs. And it's, it's, she actually made a book. And so it has, um, mine is the song, You Really Got a Hold on Me. And what I did was I traced the hands of kids in our neighborhood in Reston in Northern Virginia, and then hands of the kids across the street and down the street <clears throat> here in Williamsburg and put them, their hands on <coughs> the quilt and on the guitar. And on the guitar, uh, the strings were braided by me. That's kind of special. And then I had some screws up at the top where you would tighten the strings. And they came from my, my parents' screw collection in their, in their garage. Um, and it, it, was, it was fun to make. And I do still have a list somewhere which person's hand goes where. So that, <laughs> which fact goes to which person. <laughs> so. All right. Now this now, one, this is, this is a wonderful piece of abstract art. <laughs> My husband, Bruce, um, his mental health, when we lived in London for four years, he worked 13 hour days and his mental health was to go out on Saturday and Sunday mornings on his bicycle. And he learned a lot about the streets in London. You have to understand he's going out really early. When the weather permitted, he was out at six o'clock in the morning. And um, he found this graphic and 
I made the quilt for him and the fabric that is behind the bicycle does have a lot of circles in it. And then I quilted more circles in it. Um, and, and back to that, he left early in the morning. One day, the oldest daughter who made this wonderful <laughs> slideshow was returning from being out with friends when he was going out on his bike. <laughs> they, they got through that very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> It was cool. funny. Uh, Churn Dash Delight was a um, class on hand piecing. I've, I've taught hand piecing to two or three different groups of ladies at the at artistic art. I mean, wait a minute. At the shop in um, the second quilt shop when I work where I work the um, artistic. I'll remember in a second. And you can see here that I've used these spacers. So in between the churn dashes, if there's a space where I needed to compensate for the size of a block, there, there was the, the spacer and you can use your different fabrics. Um, this is largely machine quilted with a meander, um, but it, it did hang in the shop. There's a flower in the center churn dash right right there, the green one below. Um, yeah. yeah, Artful Quilter in Centerville is where I was teaching when, when I made this. Cool. Now, this was something fun. I have a, a good friend who um, had worked with Mary Kerr. Mary Kerr is well known as a, an aficionado on antique quilts. And she also um, made challenges and she would give someone, send some 10 or 12 friends an antique quilt block each. And you need to make a, you needed to make a specific, do something with it that updated it. So my friend Dory Emmer had done this with Mary Kerr a couple of times. And so she got 10 or 12 of her friends and I was lucky enough to be one. You can see the antique quilt parts of it right down there in the bottom and down over here. And she had a whole series and it was called The June Bride. So we had a, um, we had a rehearsal dinner. We had the uh, bachelor dinner with bow ties. I made bow ties for mine. And this is the bridal shower in the tropics. Well, so, I got that totally wrong, Annabelle. So my guess when I saw this in your PowerPoint was this was going to be one of your wonderful daughters got married in the tropics. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah, but not so. Okay. Not but so. somebody did. <laughs> yeah, and I think this may have been the first time that I used, I'm looking up at the sky, sometimes I use color captors that you can put in your in your um, washing machine and they catch the color from excess color from your clothes and you can end up with these beautifully dyed color catchers it's the right above it's that very pale there that yeah. that very yeah. pale color what about it, isn't, isn't that one too i'm not sure that may be a um a batik and, well or, the only Fine. bad thing about that is you've given me another reason to save something. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. But, Instead but you, of throwing out those color catchers, now I'm going to look at them with a whole different well, eye. <laughs> well, the good thing, there, there are two good things. You, you can lay them out and roll them up tight, like you're rolling up a cigar or something. They don't take up much room. And you probably know already, they can be used multiple times. I think you can use them up to seven times. 